Diophantus was a Hellenistic Greek mathematician whose race, origin, and life story are unknown, but we have managed to glean some important information about his history from his collected works and his impact on math. Admittedly, the Babylonians before Diophantus must be credited with inventing algebra. Diophantus, though, has been dubbed the father of algebra for his inspiration of future works in number theory and more. Of the information we know of Diophantus, we are most certain of where he lived, Alexandria. Alexandria is located in north-central Egypt, along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. It has existed there for over 3,000 years. At its height, Alexandria was home to a very famous lighthouse. Today the lighthouse is destroyed and considered a lost wonder of the world. It was also home to the Library of Alexandria. There, works in Roman, Greek, and Arabic detailing everything from geometry to religion to astronomy could be found. Alexandria is reported as being the pinnacle of learning in the ancient world, and historians believe Diophantus would have been there to see it all. Determining when Diophantus lived is slightly more difficult than determining where. Several clues indicate when Diophantus lived to us. First among them was in Diophantus' works to be discussed later. In describing a proof, Diophantus is reported to have referenced a work published by the earlier Greek mathematician Hypsicles, who we know lived around 150 BC. This provided a cap for the earliest he may have lived. Given that works by Ptolemy and other Greek astronomers following Hypsicles used geometry without using algebra, historians were able to push his birth forward significantly. On the top side, Diophantus's works were first notably referenced by Theon, Hypatia's father in about 350 AD. Together, this information puts Diophantus in Alexandria around 250 AD. At this time, Rome was the central power in Alexandria, with the Severan family and the soldier emperors largely holding command. Looking back to the timeline, it wasn't until 400 AD when Metrodorus, a lesser-known Greek mathematician and thinker, published an anthology of Greek epigrams that Diophantus' name began to spread. Metrodorus is famous additionally for establishing information about Diophantus' life and age through the use of a riddle doubling as an epitaph. The epitaph reads, Here lies Diophantus, the wonder behold. Through art algebraic the stone tells how old. God gave him from his boyhood one-sixth of his life. Here we can begin writing the statement algebraically, where A is Diophantus' age. One twelfth more as youth while whiskers grew rife, and then Yet one seventh ere marriage begun. In five years there came a bouncing new son. Alas, the dear child of master and sage. After attaining half the measure of his father's life, chill fate took him. After consoling his fate by the science of numbers for four years, he ended his life. If we solve for this equation, Diophantus can be reported to be 80 years old. Though the reliability of this report is in question, the story has captivated the attention of many readers. During those 84 years, Diophantus put in some serious work. His major publication was called Arithmetica and was composed of 13 separate handwritten works. Of those, only six have survived in entirety. The remaining seven were lost or destroyed. At one point, four Arabic texts detailing algebra of a similar sort were thought to belong to Diophantus's collection but these allegations have received much scrutiny and have been largely dismissed. In total, Diophantus presented or solved more than 130 algebraic problems, some of which were not solved until much later. In introducing his work, Diophantus stated, Knowing, my most esteemed friend Dionysus, that you are anxious to learn how to investigate problems in numbers, I have tried, beginning from the foundations on which the science is built up, to set forth to you the nature and powers subsisting in numbers. Perhaps the subject will appear rather difficult because it is not yet familiar. Beginners are, as a rule, too ready to despair of success. But you, with the impulse of your enthusiasm and the benefit of my teaching, will find it easy to master, for eagerness to learn, when seconded by instruction, ensures rapid progress. Arithmetica presented several concepts for the very first time, including rules of negative multiplication, which was interesting because Diophantus ignored all non-real solutions to quadratic equations. 
Diophantus can also be credited for displaying mathematical insight ahead of his time. Several of his boldest statements, such as, any integer can be represented as the sum of three cubes, could not be proven until much later when more powerful mathematical notations had been invented. That said, Diophantus must also be credited as one of the first mathematicians ever to utilize symbolism to abbreviate his mathematical statements. Where we use the letter X today, Diophantus used the Greek sigma. Before Diophantus, mathematicians largely wrote in rhetorical phrases where values and operations were written out longhand. The transition to symbols marks the beginning of the syncopated age and a revolution of mathematics. Today we call indeterminate algebraic expressions, or expressions with more variables than solutions, whose only solutions are integers, diophantine equations. While he contributed many things to the development of mathematics, Diophantus is important because of how many later mathematicians he influenced. Sequentially, Diophantus published much of his work in the 3rd century AD. Arithmetica made its way to several important figures after that, first of which was Hypatia, a female Greek-Arabic mathematician who expanded on his foundations, translated his editions, and presented the material to her students. Later on, Raphael Bombelli, the Italian mathematician, wrote an influential text on algebra based on much of the work in Arithmetica. Pierre de Fermat, a big name in number theory, later obtained a copy of Arithmetica and published his last theorem as an annotation in the book. It stated that there exists no three positive integers that satisfy the equation a to the n plus b to the n equals c to the n when n is greater than 2. If n were greater than 2, the equation would be familiar to us as the Pythagorean theorem. This annotation was later published and ultimately was responsible for Arithmetica's wider circulation. Lastly, in the 1700s, Euler, the Swiss mathematician, physicist, and engineer, obtained a copy of the annotated Arithmetica and proof for Ma's last theorem. Diophantus's impact on math was great, and Euler stated his virtues best. Diophantus himself, it is true, gives only the most special solutions of all the questions which he treats. Nevertheless, the actual methods which he uses for solving any of his problems are as general as those which are in use today. Nay, we are obliged to admit that there is hardly any method yet invented in this kind of analysis of which there are not sufficiently distinct traces to be discovered in Diophantus.